welcome back to the GSA studio. I am here with Sharon Mosier. She is the 125th anniversary chair of this event. Thank you for being here. And then we have Suzanne Malberg Kay, who is the GSA president. Thank you both for being here with us and sharing your stories today. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start with the very beginning. How did GSA start and what was its purpose way back when? Well, GSA started as an outgrowth of uh, Section E of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, which traditionally held their meetings in the summer. And this was inconvenient for many geologists who had field seasons, so it was hard for them to participate. The other thing is that publications and communications were dispersed. So at the Cleveland meeting in the 1880s, early 1880s, there was a meeting to discuss forming a separate association. And uh, that association was actually formed in 1888, and they had to have 100 fellows. So the founding meeting was held in Ithaca, New York at Cornell University. I'm a professor at Cornell University. It was three blocks from my office. Mm -hmm. And so from the beginning, one of the most important things was communication, to have uh, publications and an annual meeting. And they moved the annual meeting to December to get it away from the field season, which is why the society was formed on the 27th of December. And it was formed in Ithaca, New York, which was a very difficult place to get to in the winter, and it still is. And part of the reason for this was that there was a move to make a very famous geologist, James Hall, the first president, because it was thought that if the society was going to have prestige, it should have a president that was prestigious. And James Hall was the state geologist of New York and a very well-known geologist. So he was elected the first president at that first meeting. Okay. And you two personally have been along this journey together for a very long time, right? You were uh, roommates in grad school, correct? Yes, and uh, we both got our degrees from the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, and she was my teaching assistant for mineralogy. Nice. And Sharon grew up at Freeport, which is 20 miles. I grew up in Rockford, Illinois. And actually, the president of GSA two years ago was also from Rockford, so it's sort of like a hotbed of That's right. GSA society presidents right. up, up, uh, upstate Illinois. Yeah. So it must be nice for you two on a personal level as well. But let's get back talking about sure. GSA. And a lot has changed over these years, correct? How has oh, it yes. evolved? Well, it, I think it's evolved tremendously. It dominantly, to begin with, as Sue said, was really oriented towards the field, field trips, uh, research that was done uh, in the field and then reported in the GSA you know, publications. And then over time, as technology changed, more and more laboratory type experiments, more modeling, uh, different kinds of things were being addressed. And the society changed with that. And I think probably some of the biggest you know, changes are they're still occurring as technology continues to change we're capable of finding things out that we never could have understood before because we didn't have the means to actually measure things that we can now measure mm -hmm. uh, but the perhaps some of the biggest changes are for example in terms of the meetings uh, as technology advanced uh, the meetings became larger uh, they move to, you know, things are online, you know, abstracts, big change when the abstracts went online and uh, when you started reviewing things online. The meetings have changed significantly uh, in terms of the types of things that are being uh, presented and the way it's being presented. And then, of course, publications have changed and probably one of the biggest transitions in the last uh, decade or maybe 15 years has been the transition from print to electronic and that is something that has really made a big difference for all scientific societies and uh, really is still evolving. And, and just very quickly, do you find that with the advances in technology and the ability to discover things that were not possible before, are people going back and re looking at old projects from hundreds of years ago? Well, I, th I think that's really true. And in my presidential address, I will talk a little bit about the history of science at GSA over the last 125 years. And it sort of started out because 
geologists could make observations on land. They didn't know what was in the oceans. The oceans, they called them the borderlands. They had no idea what was going on below the oceans. And then after World War II, there was a major exploration of the ocean basins. And instead of being old, the oceans turned out to be young. And uh, so with the whole understanding of the oceans, ocean ridges spreading, plates subducting, came plate tectonics. And many of the ideas changed. And so I think the next revolution has been our ability to look into the interior of the Earth. Like Sharon said, I mean, everything is very tied to technology. Yeah. So now we have large seismic experiments. We image the interior of the Earth. We can use the very precise dating. So the ideas are changing. And now one of the big things that's coming along is how the continents are destroyed. So first we produce the continents, and then we destroy the continents. And so this is the things that people are talking about now, things that James Hall and the early founders would have, have not understood at all. So it's very exciting, but everybody is still going out and looking at the same rocks, yeah. the same outcrops with new technology and coming up with a different story. Mm -hmm. so, so the base, basic information, which is the rocks in the field, has not changed. And I think the other thing too is we've really become to understand the coupling between different kinds of processes, chemical, physical, biological, and geologic processes, and how they interact, and how the different parts of the Earth system interact. Everything from the Earth's interior to the surface, the hydrosphere, the biosphere, the atmosphere, and, and how it all works together. We didn't used to understand that they were so coupled. Right.